6263 between 9am and 5pm Monday to Friday. Once again, our website is kpalawyers.ca and our phone number is 905-965-6263. You're listening to Rob Mike Richards. Knock you out, eat it, whore. <laughs> On News Talk Saga 960. <laughs> It is 710 News Talk, Saga 960 Raw, Mike Richards. And as I mentioned beforehand, my my crew, yo. Yeah, that sounded real natural. And these days, they love it when guys like me do that. It's an in thing now. We go to, well, for the first time in a long time, my buddy Paul Romanock. Romy, as he's known, how you doing, buddy? I'm outstanding. Great to see you. It's uh, It's been too long and... God, I can't remember the last time. I, I don't know if you ever had me on when you had your show in Calgary. Yeah, in Calgary, I at least once, at least once. Uh, I thought maybe twice. Uh, TSN, I don't know. It's a bit of a maybe. I've mentally blocked it out. <laughs> I don't no, know if no, you're no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, oh, no. oh, hey. oh, that's right. I forgot you did Bob Cold Chicks. I like. Oh, I did well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I am the Bob. You, you made a career out of doing my impersonation. Oh, baby. Hold it up there. The Rita McNeil Christmas special. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Which makes you realize everything I've done, I can't do anymore. Like literally every single bit. I can't even, can't even do now. uh, Of course, last week, our good friend, Doug Kirkwood joins us. Dougie, how are you doing this morning? Well, very well, Mike. Romy, good morning, sir. And everybody knows, no, no, it was me that did Bob Cole. No, no, no it was me. <laughs> For the well, record, Mike did the Bob Cole, and yeah. we were all merely spectators. Wow. Yeah, we were talking about it, Mike, uh, Romy and I, earlier this week when you when you asked us to come on, and Romy and I were talking about it because uh, Bob Cole received what Lifetime Achievement Award? Yeah, yeah, he, he, he did. So, of course, people are you know people don't talk to me anymore like in their own voices it's always even when they tweet oh baby you know it's like oh there's something something going on there it's like okay you know i I, because i know he really enjoys it he really enjoys when you do the cole voice the bob cole oh i'm sure well well ken daniels now so this is going back to the fan so myself and derringer and uh, derringer's away so ken daniels so kenny sits in and uh i'm trying to think of in hockey night in canada at that time who did the pregame, pre, you know, the production meetings, whoever that was, there was a change in the name, the way the name was going to be pronounced in Montreal, you know, as a Ruzinski or Ruchinski. I forget which one in Montreal that they wanted, particularly the announced on Hockey Night Canada to say it a certain way. So let's say it's Ruzinski. Well, Cole had been saying Ruchinski or whatever it was. So out of just sort of, you know, because he talks to me all the time and Bob was in the meeting, Kenny looks at his papers and goes, no, no, that's not how you say it. He said the look on Bob's face, everybody just kind of went silent and then they all laughed. But uh, he apparently, uh, as uh, Steve Simmons has told me, um, he wasn't a huge fan of the, uh, of the Bob called chicks on like for some string. His daughter thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Uh, him not as funny but you know the you know we look back at this stuff and 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 that way too brief moment when it was the team 1050 because for those listening um you know who, who may or may not know the story so so Romy it's the first time I I I had met him I knew who he was but that we'd never really been put together like that beforehand of course Dougie Tim Preston I knew and and the late Brian Henderson who was at 1050 so they just kind of threw him in there but for that time I, we had such great, like that, such great fun, like that, that felt like, and because it was still in the old chum building, it was still a 1331 chum. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, there's so much happened, a turbulent time, including the 9-11 moment. And I know we'll get to that, but, but Romy came up with this idea of on Fridays when it was warm, there was a, like a rooftop thing. I never knew about this rooftop and where we go and we'd have like cold beers after the show. Uh, it, it was a gathering of friends that, uh, that we had at 1050 and and an, uh, I look back on it as not only one of my fondest memories when we're all together because it was really when you look at you know and, and as I'm saying here this morning Romy Doug uh, myself and Tim Preston but it also was a great time for me personally to start developing some of the stuff that would become a signature of 
the shows in Calgary, the, 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 the 1050 shows. A lot of it came from there because of this open discussion and dialogue that we all had. And, and Romy kids about, oh, no, I came with we, a lot of those bits that that I would produce in voice came from conversations what during the show during a commercial five minutes beforehand it was they weren't like they were all my ideas in fact a lot of times these guys would turn to me and say hey you know it'd be funny <laughs> and just the premise of a bit that's all they had to say they didn't write it they didn't have to think a thing uh, uh Romy said you know it'd be kind of funny uh blah 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 and I'd run in with uh that little freak Maury and uh then he'd produce that thing I'd stand over his shoulder tell him how to produce it and boom, a bit. But the whole show was like it was, and and you know, you heard from Doug as we get to Calgary, completely free form. But but Romy, that's really where it started. It, it that kind of stuff all started because of that show. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, I mean, that type of collaboration wasn't completely new to me because I'd come from. Uh, I'd been at TSN for a number of years, and uh, my sort of stock in trade there uh, was as a play-by-play -play announcer. And there's <clears throat> that kind of collaboration takes place all the time, typically over dinner or breakfast meetings. Uh, but I, you know, I do remember working with you and how much fun it was and Doug and Tim and Maury. And uh, yeah, without question, um, you know, I, I was very big on us. Hey, like, let's get together and talk about this. And so many, you know, you were such a creative guy and Doug is as well. Uh, one that sticks out, you know, I don't know how far memory lane down memory lane we want to go, but there was a, there was a, a, a guy named Tony Muser, who was the, <laughs> the manager of the Kansas City Royals and the Royals had been in a horrible, horrible losing streak. And they finally won a game and then they fired Muser like the, the, the day after he won, finally broken, you know, whatever it was, a 12 or 15 game, some horrendous losing streak. And it was exactly that, Mike. I remember us going <laughs> for uh, for post show beers uh, and, and saying, you know, it would be funny. You know, like it, there must, I, I remember, I remember the conversation saying there's got to be a bit in there somewhere. And next morning you came in and you knocked it out of the park with it. It was sort of, as I recall, it was like a, Mike did a recreation of, you know, the, the Bob, the old Bob Newhart one-sided phone call thing. Tony Muser sitting in his office, the phone rings and it's like, Hello, and they're all yeah. celebrating this win. Hey, way to go, you And then, and then in the, in Mike's best Edward G. Robinson, and I'm not doing it justice, but he goes, "Yeah, Muser, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. They're really happy to have won a game finally. Yeah, I was uh, was too good a job. You're fired. What? <laughs> That's exact. Somehow yeah. the the white corporate world. Oh, I always came out like this. Yeah, saying, well, yeah, yeah. So it was that was that was every white corporate voice that we did. And and Tony Muser somehow had like a Bill Clinton kind of voice. I, I don't know why that happens. Like, yeah, we won. Yeah, it was a great game. Yeah, we got ice cream and cake. Like it, it, it was typical of some of the ideas we thought some of them uh, were so uh, out there. And, and Doug, you know, because uh, uh, <laughs> I know at times you were entertained by watching me stand over Maury because he had no idea what was going on. I mean, you know, when I'm directing him, which the the infamous uh, horse face versus versus a ferret face this is uh something now that would be put me in jail because i uh, i women who i felt looked like those animals and sometimes it was whales or sexies or what was the duck for the lips or whatever it there was, was like, uh the, smiles, the, ducks, the, smiles. There, there was the smiles there was the yeah. duck faces there was the cannons yeah, uh, the i don't cannon. know why they were called the cannons uh, but i think chesty morgan and dolly parton were part of that team if i recall <laughs> Yeah, it's very, um, uh, you know, then you know who asked for a copy because he heard it in Ottawa. This is true because they, 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 you know, we had a network. People have to understand the team yeah. based in Toronto, but there was Ottawa, Calgary, Winnipeg, Vancouver. So they would talk. And I think Gretzky had some friends that were on that Ottawa. Or one of them was a close friend of Gretzky's and Wayner asked to have if he could have the collection of those 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 bob cole play-by-play -play segments and i remember you know at times you know over the years people said do you ever feel bad i don't feel bad about any bads like i don't i've never felt bad about doing comedy of a time and they said well don't you think you get in trouble now of course that's why you don't hear them that's why should i do a vj sing or the way michelle we used to talk or you know jeff garcia i mean you can go down the line of stuff but 
I think the one thing that I've always recognized is comedy at the time. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a walking cancel culture guy, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't care if people even bring it up, but um, you know, you, you, you try very hard to be creative and I guess you could go through all comedy, including Saturday night live or even things like SCTV that you think would be, well, they didn't ever, never did anything wrong, but by today's cultures, Lin Yi Tang and, you know, being Asian people or, or yeah. the, 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 the portrayal, even of Eugene Levy, whose son is gay, must have done, I don't know how many characters of that time to create, you know, the absurdity, really, which is what comedy is. It's that just a position of, of, of something that the two things just don't belong. Therein lies the humor. And you take chances when you do that. Uh, comedically, you take chances. And so uh, I look at what we've done and what we did over those years. I have no problem with anything that we ever did. None. Zero. No, I mean, no. I think the, the salient point there is uh, it was of its time. Um, you know, I mean, you can go back, uh, Mike, you, uh, you go down an interesting uh, thread there. You pull an interesting thread. It's, it's, if you go back in, in time and look at uh, great comedians, there's always somebody, and some of the best ones, that are you know, pushing the envelope to use the cliche. If you want to go back as far as the great Lenny Bruce, uh, who was, you know, arrested uh, for some of his routines back in, uh, you know, this is back in the the 60s. Uh, Lenny Bruce, by today's standards, would still be fairly edgy, but uh, compared to somebody like Bill Burr, not a patch. Uh, <laughs> well, that's right. That's you know, right. Uh, but yeah. so it changes all the time. Uh, you know, uh, there was a great comedian no longer with us named Bill Hicks. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. 25 years ago, he was right there on the edge, pushing it on that edge of, of discomfort and making you laugh. And, uh, you know, that's some of the best comedy. And, and so, yeah, you very much of its time. Would you do it now? No. I mean, probably uh, Bob Cole chicks I like would not fly now for, uh, for various reasons, and maybe that's a good thing. But uh, at the time, it certainly, uh, you know, we were, we didn't feel as though we were outside of societal norms at all. See, that's a great way of putting it. And, and Doug, as you know, we there was no show that pushed it like the one in Calgary. I mean, and and people can argue all they want about you know where right or wrong, but I know we were number one and, and had the number one sports numbers in Canada. But see, the the the, the community, as you know, in Calgary they just couldn't get a, a, a enough of it. Like if it didn't pass that community standard, trust me, I'd get one day. Like you'll know pretty quickly whether you cross that line or not. Because remember, this is when you go back into the, 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 the mid 2000s and like 2004, five, six in that era, that, that was, I mean, still wasn't dominated by the phones. Like it, it, it wasn't, it, you know, we got mostly emails, but if someone didn't like something and they would phone, like people in the day would always phone and they would, and look, they'd, I was brought up uh, by the CRTC and the Standards Council, I don't know, like probably five or seven times in that in that period of time. Um, one bit, uh, twice. It's like double jeopardy. I don't I don't know. I don't know how. But the bad mouth Batman was, uh, oh, yeah. was I forgot was, I, was, yeah. was pretty heavy, Doug. But you remember, you know what the reaction was? People couldn't get enough of that stuff. Yeah, I, I found, you know, maybe, we've all been uh, in media long enough to realize the uh, you know, I'll call it the sensitivities across Canada. Romy, you know, you you were not only across the United States, but Canada as well with your play-by-play -play for as many years as you did. Uh, Mike Radio kind of took us from coast to coast as well. So we had an opportunity to really get exposed to the culture. And, uh, you know, this is a general comment, but I think things in Alberta are a little bit more relaxed, let, let's say, than, than Ontario. Um, they, they would focus on different things and, and appreciate the comedic aspect of it. But yeah, there were so many things that we did that, Looking back now, it, it would just never, ever fly. Maybe now in a podcast, guys, but the, yeah. the, the, you know, the responsibilities, let's call it from a broadcasting standpoint, when you're doing a, a podcast, there are none. You can say and do whatever you want. And I'm not really sure that, you know, putting out an edgy product or something controversial would even raise eyebrows nowadays because everybody's doing it with language. There are no language barriers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's why it was created. And one belongs on, uh, 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 you know, the, the podcast, obviously, in the internet world, and the terrestrial radio. Now, why some of these big companies don't understand that the two don't meet, they somehow they, they think somehow they're going to take maybe those that were on a podcast, put them on a morning show, and not understanding why their ratings are zero. Yeah, the people who follow them on the podcast want the podcast product when they want it in the style in which they want it. 
So to make them go <laughs> on a morning show, uh, that audience doesn't transfer. They're not getting up. It, to, to, to do a proper morning show, and let's say it's a male dominant one, it's, it's, we'll say what it is, sports radio, uh, you're in the car. That, that, it, the show is built for those to listen to it as they go to work. The people who listen to those kinds of podcasts, they, they ain't going to work at uh, f- five o'clock in the morning. Like that's just not the audience that follows. How they can't understand that or, or have that be lost in translation to me is inexcusable. So a lot of these morning shows that have literally zero ratings, I have almost zero feel, uh, you know, I don't feel bad for them because they're terrible at what they do. And that's where we sit in radio right now. It, 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 is, it is so far away from what I learned, Romy, walking through those doors at, at the first time at 1050 Chum in, in, in 1986, and I'm overwhelmed by the talent. Like it's like you realize you just walked into a big league and you can feel it as soon as you went through the door. And now I look at it, it's like you can be at Ryerson or Seneca or and, and look, I'm not putting the schools down, but I'm saying you literally can go from there and be on the air in a Toronto morning show within three months because you're standing there and you are an intern. That's inexcusable. That's not happening in the NHL. <laughs> that doesn't happen in professional sports. You know, you probably have to beat out a lot of unbelievable junior talent, world talent, maybe guys who veterans have been around. You don't get to just walk in and play for the Leafs. And that's what makes me sick about our business. It is a joke, a joke. Well, there, and of course there are, there are a million reasons for that, but I, I think the biggest thing is uh, that the uh, the ownership has been concentrated to the extent that you you basically have two players. You have Rogers and Bell, uh, and to a lesser extent, Chorus. Uh, you know, certainly when I started in the business, when I started in the business, Sonny, <laughs> uh, it was yeah. You don't you don't sound very old saying that, Romy. Please well, you know continue. what? Yeah. Let, 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 let's just hold on because <laughs> look, we're we're going to take a break here. We'll come back. It's a short break at the bottom. And then we have the full, uh, like from uh, 740 to like 755. And in, in that time, I also want to touch upon this podcast that is uh, it's not only doing great. It's the first time I saw the name and the premise, I just knew it was a winner. It, it all, you talk, talk about the opposite of what we just talked about. Your podcast makes complete sense. And I do want to talk about that. So hang on with us. Uh, both uh, Doug and Romy will be hanging around uh, in the studio uh, up until the eight o'clock hour. So we'll take a break right now at 727 on News Talk Saga 960. Hang on. There'll be more gambling, booze, and meat talk sprinkled in with sarcasm, condescension, and insults. This is Raw Mike Richards. When I was in seventh grade, I was the fat kid in my class. Ew. Attention minor hockey teams. The Mississauga Steelheads want to give you the experience of a lifetime. Raise money for your team. Skate on the ice as the Steelheads play in front of thousands of fans. Or have Steelheads players at your practice. To get your team involved, head to MississaugaSteelheads.com or give us a call at area code 905-502-7788. Imagine having over 100 TV multi-language channels at your fingertips. Imagine having over 100 multi-language radio stations at your fingertips. Now, imagine an app that lets you watch or listen to all of this amazing entertainment whenever or wherever you want. Now, imagine it's all free. eBaba is the reality in mobile entertainment. Download eBaba for iOS or Android. Turn imagination into reality. Adibaba. Premier Ford wants to build a highway that will cut through the heart of our communities, from Mississauga to Vaughan and everything in between. Not only will it pave over the Greenbelt and some of Ontario's best farmland and wetlands, it'll cost at least $6 billion of public money all while putting Ontario into gridlock for generations. Go to leadnow.ca forward slash H413 and tell Ford to stop Highway 413, authorized by Lead Now Society. The Punjabi Community Health Services PCHS Lunger on Wheels is a program aimed at providing food to frail, homebound seniors who are unable to prepare meals for themselves. Each day we deliver fresh, hot, and nutritious meals that are familiar and comforting to a wide range of ethnicities according to the dietary needs of each person. Since 2016, PCHS has delivered nearly 200,000 meals to an average of 80 seniors per month. Too many seniors are stuck at home and out of sight. They are vulnerable to illness, weakness, and medical complications arising from hunger and poor nutrition. Now, more than ever, we need your help to expand our Longer on Wheels food delivery program. 
For more information and to donate, please go to our website, pchs.foundation. You can also send us an email at ceo at pchs.foundation. Our aim is a simple one, to ensure that no senior will go without food, ever. Hey, Mississauga, this winter, let's all support local. You can shop, dine, and enjoy everything Mississauga has to offer and support our local businesses at the same time. From unique family-run stores and shops to great dining choices and even experiences at local hotspots, there's something for everyone here in Mississauga only minutes away. Go to shoplocalmississauga.ca to learn how you can enjoy everything local and keep Mississauga strong. Welcome to Sports Interaction, Canada's odds maker. Dedicated to giving competitive odds on the teams and sports that matter to Canadians. American football season is here, and SIA has you covered. Get more ways to play on every sport online at Sports Interaction, including the best live in play. Canada plays at SIA. Get in the game at Sports Interaction. Canada's odds maker. Brought to you by Mohawk Online in Canada. Players must be 19 years or over. Play responsibly. News Talk Saga 960 is the new home for Raw Mike Richards. Brought to you by Bell Lifestyle Products. Also streaming live on saga960.ca. And now, from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. It is uh, 7.30. News Talk Saga 960 Raw Mike Richards in studio all hour with our good friends Paul Romanek and Doug Kirkwood. Uh, looks like a lot of people enjoying the conversation. And I know it's going to go by uh, uh, really quickly, like it, it, uh, it always does, uh, which is usually a, a pretty good sign. Uh, you know, I think the one thing uh, in, in talking about this and the response that we're getting already this morning is just the ability to sort of take a look at world events and talk about them uh, naturally. Now, there's not a lot of production we can do on that kind of stuff, but you can certainly talk about, you know, just sort of what happens here, of course, in Mississauga, uh, you know, they have their uh, own issues, but certainly in the GTA, if you're looking all around, there's, uh, you know, getting b- beaten down with the snow. Now, Doug, you're, you're right in the city. Did you say that five buses at one point were, 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 were stuck on your road? And, and Avenue Road is a, uh, that's a busy road. Yeah, I'm in Midtown Toronto. Uh, so I'm on Avenue Road between Eglinton and Lawrence, for those that know the, uh, the Toronto area. And at one point, uh, I was out with my neighbor yesterday. We had double snowblowers happening. And uh, I, I walked around the corner of my house and I looked down Avenue Road, southbound on Avenue Road, and there were six TTC buses at one point, all pointing in different directions. Um, what, what a gong show that was. I, I, I find it funny that, odd, that Toronto was the one that I, I think got the most snow. We were 50, 50 centimeters or something by the time it was all said and done. However, after living in Calgary, I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and went, eh, you know, things happen. But, you know, it's talking about things happen. Yesterday, Mike, my, my, my wife, Kim, goes out for a run. I'm laying in bed because I'm a lazy oaf. And she comes into the bedroom and I said, hey, baby, how was your run? She goes, oh, it's great. It was good. But I, my, my throat is a little scratchy. Uh. Yeah. So she's coughing. So we're pretty sure that uh, Kim now has uh, Omicron. It's great. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't take much. I mean, you know, I, I think where we were all deathly afraid in that first year or so of, you know, be testing positive for COVID. Now we're in a strange area because of where we're at and what the fourth wave or whatever it is, that it's, it's like a throat thing, a cough thing, yeah, a, runny no- it, a runny nose thing. It seems like, like a common cold. So, um, you know, for a lot of us, at least for me anyway, I, you know, yeah, you, they tell me to take a shot. I take a shot, take the booster. I get a booster, whatever it is. And it seems now that should you get something now, that it, it really is just akin to getting a cold. And, and I'm not trying to, you know, dilute the situation because there are people dying about it. I don't, it's no laughing matter. However, we have all had our triple shots and, and hopefully if, if this is the worst that Kim will get, scratchy throat, a bit of a cough, maybe a little bit of a runny nose, but you know, she doesn't need to be hospitalized or, or anything along those lines. But uh, hopefully things are starting to, to taper off finally. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, in trying to understand where we're at, it, you know, we're, they're, they're thinking that it will peak, like in the next couple of weeks, something like that. And yeah. then hopefully, and then hopefully it's supposed to drop pretty hard, pretty fast. At least that's what they 
They say the modeling is. I'm just going by what they tell us, folks. Not that I know. <laughs> Mike, I was going to ask you before. Uh, I know Romy's just grabbing a coffee or something, and uh, he's going to jump on and, and talk about his podcast. You know, I, I it's called The Walrus Was Paul. I tried to get him to go with I Am The Paulrus. He, he didn't want to. I'm glad he didn't do that, just so you know. Glad. Okay. Glad um, when he gets back on the line, and I, and I don't want to blindside him, um, but, you know, it, it's a couple of days old. I wanted to ask Romy. You know, he spent so many years involved in hockey and he did so many, inter- so many interviews and talked to so many people. <laughs> this latest Leon Drysaddle nonsense. I, I want to hear your take on that, Mike. Do, do you think the reporter went too far? D- did, did he overstep the line? Did he just put, was he being honest and, and maybe a professional player couldn't handle it? D- is that a trend in the media? Do you think that it, sh- it, it should be a trend or do you have no problem with, with what that reporter had talked okay, about? Okay, so, so that's where, because I know we have to take a break. We're going to go back on the other oh, side. We'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll set it up and, and uh, come back on the other side. Romy, just so you know, uh, the, uh, it was a Jim Matheson. I think that's his, the yeah. reporter from Edmonton who dry side. So we'll talk, we'll, we'll, we'll have our takes on that. We'll just take a break here, come back on the other side. We'll talk some hockey. Leafs uh, lose in, uh, in New York last night to the Rangers. Uh, and and we'll talk maybe a little hockey, you know, because Paul's certainly got enough of those stories, but also uh, the podcast, because that is uh, that is a very cool thing. So we'll take a break here, come back, talk a little more. We'll go all the way to the top of the hour. Right now, it is 736 on News Talk, Saga 960. No radio? No problem. Stream us live on Saga960am.ca. You're listening to Rob Mike Richards on News Talk, Saga 960. Welcome to Sports Interaction. Canada's odds maker dedicated to giving competitive odds on the teams and sports that matter to Canadians. American football season is here and SIA has you covered. Get more ways to play on every sport online at Sports Interaction, including the best live in play. Canada plays at SIA. Get in the game at Sports Interaction, Canada's odds maker. By Mohawk Online in Canada. Players must be 19 years or over. Play responsibly. Attention, minor hockey teams. The Mississauga Steelheads want to give you the experience of a lifetime. Raise money for your team. Skate on the ice as the Steelheads play in front of thousands of fans. Or have Steelheads players at your practice. To get your team involved, head to MississaugaSteelheads.com or give us a call at area code 905-502-7788. Imagine having over 100 TV multi-language channels at your fingertips. Imagine having over 100 multi-language radio stations at your fingertips. Now, imagine an app that lets you watch or listen to all of this amazing entertainment whenever or wherever you want. Now, imagine it's all free. eBaba is the reality in mobile entertainment. Download eBaba for iOS or Android. Turn imagination into reality at eBaba. If you thought Mark Petrone was a pain in the ass in the mornings, Wait until you hear him in the afternoons. That's right. Mark Petrone and all his freedom-loving awesomeness is now on Afternoons on News Talk Saga 960. Everything you've always loved and hated about Mark will be all there every weekday, 1 to 3 p.m. Enjoy your new afternoon delight. The Mark Petrone Show, weekdays, 1 to 3 p.m. Only on Newstalk Saga 960. Afternoon delight. The morning show that doesn't suck. Well, I have a microphone and you don't. So you will listen to every damn word I have to say! You're listening to Rob Mike Richards on News Talk Saga 960. And now, from the Bell Lifestyle Studio, here's Mike. As we come to 740 News Talk Saga 960, Raw Mike Richards. Uh, along with Doug Kirkwood, Paul Romanek. And as we went to a uh, break, uh, Doug had asked the question of the uh, dry sidle, uh, Jim Matheson uh, exchange and, and our feelings on it. Now, uh, as I've mentioned many times, and, and when Dave Bastel uh, was on the show, he has been a beat reporter. So he, he has had to cover teams where, you know, you're at the practice, you're before the practice, you're after the practice, uh, pregame, postgame. It's uh, uh, something I've never done, right? I was always a, a morning guy in radio. I never had to cover teams. 
And from what he always used to say and what I understand the job to be, you have to figure out some kind of relationship. You, you have to come to some uh, comfort level in, in, in where you can go and where you can't go simply because you have to do it so often. So if the relationship becomes adversarial, the job almost dies because they just won't talk to you. Now, Romy, you've been around teams for, for, for decades having to do this kind of stuff. So when you saw that exchange back and forth, what, what was your take on the situation? Well, there was, uh, it could have been handled differently on both sides. Uh, I think more than anything, it is a, a product, uh, a byproduct of the situation that uh, reporters and athletes find themselves in during the pandemic. And just for those of you who you know, haven't covered teams uh, close hand, uh, the way it generally works in normal times uh, is that after a practice or a game, uh, reporters will typically wander into the dressing room and the area where players are, uh, you know, taking their equipment off and you'll go over and you'll have, you know, sometimes it'll be what's called a scrum where there'll be a number of, of different organizations and microphones will be talking to a player. But quite oftentimes, if you're a beat guy like Jim Matheson, who's been around for a long time and they see you there, uh, you have the credibility that you can, you know, take somebody aside and have a one on one conversation with them. Uh, that is not possible under pandemic restrictions. So thus, the only exposure that you are getting to the players is up on a podium like that, where you have to ask your question publicly. Uh, and I think if that was a question that Jim had asked, just kind of coming up to Leon one-on-one -on -one in the dressing room, uh, you know, Leon might have said, who knows? He might have said something like, oh, well, how do you want me to answer that question? And, and they could have had a little exchange and it would have gone no further. But you know, when you ask that question publicly, uh, Leon obviously got his hackles up and then Jim likewise. And what happened is, is what happened. But uh, I think, you know, they're they're both pros. Leon Dreisaitl is a pretty nice guy. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, very polite to deal with whenever I had to deal with him. Uh, and Jim Matheson is a pro. He's been doing this for a long time. His work has been honored by the, uh, by the Hockey Hall of Fame. Um, but they, they both just got caught up in sort of the, the, the crappy situation that we find ourselves in. I, I think that that's the biggest culprit in all of this. That's my view on it. Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's very accurate. I think it's very fair because generally when I heard about it, as the public, you want to jump on the player first because we want to get on the arrogant, rich, privileged athlete. And you're like, oh, yeah, that is, oh, that is so like those guys. And then I saw it. And I was like, <laughs> okay, I didn't feel that way at all. And then I go, okay, so Matheson, and it is, it's like having two kids that generally are pretty good, but sometimes, you know, even as children, you know, you have brothers, what they, they mix it up. And that's kind of what happened because once he got his backup, that is Leon, then Jim, because he's done it for, I don't know, 40 years. I don't know how long he's done it. He decided he'd go after that. And it was sort of uh, let's, let's, you know, probably, and I, I don't know behind the scenes, what kind of make good they will be or whatever you can bet that's going to happen because um, the frustration of losing like that, you can only ask so many questions about why it's going wrong. Cause at some point you don't know, like at some point there really is no answer, except you're not doing everything right. <laughs> And so that's what he said. And then I was like, can you expound about, and then it just, it, it got escalated, I guess is the word I'd, I'd use from there. And I really, I really look at it as, you know, if you've seen NBA or NFL stuff, major league baseball stuff for sure, which is a billion times worse than this. But as you said, Romy also lending to it is, and this is what we've lost during this last 18 months, two years, the, that inter actual physical, uh, presence that you have with somebody you react differently when you're in front of someone's face like two feet away as opposed to 20 feet or like this on zoom it changes the human interaction i think well i, I think that you know it's it, it, again I, I think there's blame on both sides because either looking back at it it's, you know it flew by we're analyzing it it's just you know it's like when you yeah. talk about a game right you're talking about something that happened in the blink of an eye and trying to deconstruct it but i i think leon dreisaitl could have diffused the whole thing by uh, kahal kelly writes a similar thing in the globe and mail this morning but he could have diffused the whole thing by giving what athletes are what is their stock and trade and in interviews and that is well 
well, you know, we win as a team, we lose as a team. There's lots of things we have to work on and we're all working on them as a team and we're trying to do uh, the best we can. La di da di da. Uh, hey, but he got it. It was like you're it was like you're a player there for a second. <laughs> <Exactly>. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but he got his back up uh, probably because, you know, they're crappy and not playing well and he's more frustrated than anybody. So he got his back up a little bit. And then on the other side, maybe Jim could have just rolled his eyes and said, OK, Leon, you know, whatever and let it go but Jim was probably has had an, had about enough of not being able to sit down and have one-on-one -on -one conversations with players and he was all oh, this is just bull and I'm gonna you know so I think it, I honestly do think it was two good people a little bit of blame on both sides and I'm sure they're both having the same conversation in their heads looking back on it and keeping in mind that Jim well, Madison would Go ahead, Sorry, Bernie. Doug, I just want to, Mike, and you're absolutely right. I covered baseball, NHL, Major League Baseball, golf, a ton of them as a reporter, hockey players, by far, not even close, the best professional athletes to deal with, by far. You know, the, with a baseball player in my day, the dick quotient was yeah. like a 12 <laughs> out of 10, yeah. would have yeah. gone way worse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could, uh, we don't have enough time, but we could talk about the day that Reggie Jackson came in and sat in the studio, but that's another uh, conversation during the, during the team days. Just what bothered me the most about what Matheson did is he's been with the uh, reporting on the Oilers from day one. Okay. All of the players on the Oilers weren't even born. I, I respect the guy, but when I hear the word, you're acting a little pissy, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, dude, just, I know you're trying to get a reaction, but but let it go. Romy, you've never used kind of that salty language on your podcast before, have you? Uh, <laughs> no, no, not generally. Uh, and certainly, you know, again, uh, blame on both sides. I think probably if if Jim can take it back, and, and I don't know, I haven't had a conversation with Jim uh, about it, but, uh, you know, maybe not the, because you lose the moral high ground as soon as, in a situation like that, as soon as you swear, you lose the moral high ground. Yeah, or, yeah. Well, your mom is fat. What about <laughs> oh. that? You know, it just, it, it, you know, <laughs> at least I have a mom. Mom, okay, oh. guys, guys, please. Well, now, now, oh. hey now, hey now. And, if, and anybody, rather than getting in a verbal sword fight with you, I would hope somebody would know better. I know I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not going to yeah. win that one. No, yeah, like the day, they, yeah. the day during the World Cup that someone stole off my car and I, my Irish flag. Someone did that at the Team 1050, and I was oh not very pleased. And I came in, and I go, who would do that? Don't they know? And, and the room got very quiet. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, give it, I'll, I'll give it back. I, I've had yeah. this sitting in my closet here for years. I'll Robbie's give it back. very quiet. He's oh very quiet. Yeah. Uh, well, we had you, you, you gave me a great one, though. You gave me the old... Hey, Roby, that was hilarious. I'll steal his flag. <laughs> Sting. Ho, ho. <laughs> oh, we had a bunch of the infamous cigar in the drink in Montreal, probably the classic. And, you know, because guess what? We're going to do this again. People are like, are you guys going to do this all the time? We do it every day as far as I'm concerned. I don't care. We're not, we're not doing anything. So, uh, yeah. Now, because I do want to get to – now, yeah, by the way, it's 747 News Talk, Saga 960, Raw, Mike Richards, Doug Kirkwood, Paul Romanuk. And even in the day back, going back to the Team 1050, I was amazed because I didn't know, because Romy and I had just met, about the depth of knowledge he had about the Beatles. And so randomly on a daily basis, people, because it was a national show. Nerd. They, 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 they'd be firing these Beatles questions. Oh, yeah, well, John Lennon's mom. I'm like, oh, come on. You know, like it, would, it, it, it was endless. But I don't think he ever didn't know something that got sent in and so explain what your podcast is now because it's extremely popular and the actual thinking of what goes into this i think is it's a you talked about a 12 out of 10 that's what this is this all makes great sense it sounds good explain uh you know the name of the podcast where they can find it and what it is well it's called the walrus was paul for those of you who are Beatle fans, you know that's a play on uh, a Beatles play on words. It's uh, from uh, a song called Glass Onion on the White Album. You know, another clue for your wall. The Walrus was Paul. Uh, so I, I thought it was a fit because my name is Paul. Uh, and it's a very simple premise is uh, I talk to Canadian music people, mostly artists, and I talk to them about their favorite Beatles or Beatles solo album. And we go through it track by track and intersperse it, of course, with 
talk about their work and what they're up to and how the Beatles have maybe influenced what it is they do. And we've had some great guests. You can check out the archive uh, wherever you get your podcast. Just do a search for the Walrus Was Paul podcast or go to the podcast website, which is Romycast. Uh, dot uh, dot com so r-o-m-y-c-a-s-t dot com and we've had uh, jim cuddy and colin cripps from blue rodeo on Stephen page from the bare naked ladies mo berg from the pursuit of happiness has been on a couple of times uh you know there have been some fantastic guests and clearly it is uh, people of a certain era But uh, if you are a big Beatles fan, you will enjoy it immensely. And all of the artists who come on are big Beatles fans and big music fans. And uh, and they talk about it with a lot of passion and knowledge. It's it's been a lot of fun. And I did it, Mike, because I wanted to do a podcast and I didn't want to do a sports podcast because every sports announcer who gets canned uh, ends up doing a bloody sports cast. And we (laughs) I wanted to do something, you know, non sports and uh, music is a big passion of mine the Beatles in particular so it was a good fit and it's been going a couple of years and uh, it's it's doing well thank you well it's uh you know when you start looking at subject matter it's it's like uh was it dark side of the ring that's all the all the wrestling uh yeah. wrestling ones. now I didn't grow up with wrestling so I I it's it's foreign to I mean I know the big names but I never followed it I, I wasn't a wrestling guy but it's funny when you find subject matter and when you talk about wrestling for instance the human stories of it, forget about the storylines, forget about uh, actually, it's all the other stuff, the depth of the story, which makes it engaging. When you, you didn't have to be born in, you know, 1962 or whatever, or previous and, and enjoyed the Beatles music. At some point as a music person, it, you, you are going to cross what the Beatles influence was not only as themselves, but on the rest of recorded basically music history. And one night I'm driving back from someplace and there's a, there was a Beatles channel on, on uh, satellite radio. And then it, it just, it is incredible. And, and this is what it's hard to get your head around that the different styles of music that came from one band is so extreme. I literally have no answers for how one song gets written as opposed as opposed to another. And I have not seen get back, right. I've not, I've not seen, the, the incredible uh, documentation. Oh, you got to you got to watch it. Yeah. Mike. You gotta watch uh, it. I, so what is your feeling on that? On that on that doc? It's doc- incredible. Like the, the, the thing about it uh, that that got me and Doug can speak to this as well is uh, it transcends just the Beatle nerds, uh, right? I mean, it's, a, it's so yes, of course, if you're a Beatles fan or a musician, you're going to watch it. But, you know, my wife, for example, she's a casual Beatles fan. She likes the Beatles. She's been married to me for a long time, so she's heard them. And and but she's not like, a uh, yeah, so they uh, switched out of the uh, the uh, new version of the Neumann mic for that track. And, and, and <laughs> the, you know, she's not like that, which I am. Um, it's, uh, but you know, she sat and watched it and was fascinated by it. And I said, well, do you like, do you find this interesting? It's just like, they're just sort of sitting there talking, interacting. And she said, well, one, uh, yes, it's just interesting seeing the dynamic of the four people together, but two, you know, they're the Beatles. I mean, so it's interesting to watch. And that's been the big thing with the ratings uh, is uh, om- just over half of the people who watch it are over the age of 55 in the numbers that I saw. But flip that around, you know, just under half are under 55. So, you know, a lot of them weren't even born when the Beatles broke up and they still hold a cultural relevance enough for people to watch eight hours of it, but you'll love it, Mike. Like it's, it's fascinating just to see the human dynamic. Well, the one thing that struck me and I don't know, Doug, if you, cause I said, I haven't seen the whole thing, but just when I see clips of it, I'm like, okay, so is one person really doing a lot of the work because I'm looking at McCartney and he seems to, <laughs> is it me or is he doing everything? <laughs> <laughs> and then and there's yoko see that would have driven me nuts I, yeah I, I don't care what that's like every meeting we have at the team 1050 and and Romy brings brings carrie and carrie said well <laughs> when you do bob cole oh, shut, get her out of- no, I, yeah. I, I i don't know if i can handle that i don't i couldn't take it <laughs> well when you uh when you watch it mike and i know the time will come that you will watch it what you're talking about kind of is addressed by paul mccartney he kind of dances along because john shows up later a little bit and he makes some reference about Yoko being there, but you can tell during the during the the, the series that at, at times there's a bit of an awkwardness there, and then they're just kind of jamming along, and then Yoko starts barking out her howling like a 
<laughs> like a cat that's on a, it, it's really irritating. But from a, from a musical standpoint, um, I think anybody with any musical ability or anybody who, have, who has any interest in playing an instrument, writing a song, or, or even knowing about the Beatles will find this absolutely fascinating because in this auto-tuned world that we live in now where anybody has a microphone and all of a sudden you're a recording artist, to watch arguably the biggest band in the world and how they were able to collaborate and come up with a song like the writing of Get Back and the lyrics aren't quite down, you find yourself almost cheering them through the song while Paul's writing this. He's going, okay, so Jojo was a man. No, that's not. And we all know what the lyrics are, but it hasn't been actually created yet. And that whole process as to how they came up with it. Uh, John Lennon was a little bit, I, I, he, I think he was on drugs at the, at the beginning of the, of the documentary, but he really re-engages. You see a really playful sense of humor from these guys. And, and here's something that Romy and I talked about, and, and maybe most people don't realize. When the Beatles finally decided to call it quits and break up, they weren't even 30 years old, guys. Yeah, that's tw that. 27? The, 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 when someone, I don't know, it came up the other day about the actual length of time they were together recording. It was so much shorter than in my head. I have it so much more than, than, than what is it? What is the actually technically how, how long is about seven the Beatles? Years, about seven years from the uh, rec and being in recording their first album to recording uh, the, the <laughs> last album that they recorded, Abbey Road. Like, <laughs> there are garbage bands out there who've been yeah, around I know. for 30 years, haven't done one good thing, even by mistake. Well, there is that band that they said uh, that came out of uh, England. They said they were bigger than the Beatles. Oasis. How did the, how did they work out? Oh yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Look, I know we're out of time. I knew this hour. Okay. Just promise you, we're, we're we can do this on a regular basis because this has been way too much fun. Uh, people love it, and it and it went by way too fast. And which I knew it would be because we we really as 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 usual didn't get to half the stuff I thought we talk about. But that's why, Romy, we're gonna do this at least oh, yeah, regularly yeah. or so, yeah. whatever you want to do because i could do this every day for god's anytime, sake anytime i'm yeah. uh it's been fun and uh plus uh, i've got to come back at least one more time so that you can do justice to the cigar and the <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't get to that we, uh, see, in, the the rock, in the broadcasting business we call that a hook <laughs> shut up doug <laughs> all right boys thanks so much paul romanek doug kirkwood thank you for this morning fantastic my pleasure take care thanks for having me mike thanks man Boy, that hour went by. And I said, uh, way, way too fast than it would be. That was fantastic. We'll talk to uh, Jason Tom. We'll do a little basketball at 8.10 this morning. And, uh, but that was, that was great stuff. It's 7.57 on News Talk, Saga 960. Your favorite morning show has a new home. My